everybody, welcome back to another episode of Shifty's 49ers Talk. It's your boy Shifty coming at you with another one. Today, we're going to be doing some draft talk on whether I believe the 49ers should trade up in the second round from pick 61 to a higher point to get a player that the they covet or that I covet, um, and of course, at a position of need, and whether it's going to be worth the possible trade up. Now, before we get into that, two things I want to touch on. So first thing is I've actually been doing a podcast with my boy, John Jay from 49ers Ultimate Report. Our podcast is called the Candlestick Point Report. We're both from San Francisco. We talk 49ers football. We talk the draft, free agency, you know, all news on and off the field. Um, We've had two episodes so far. I'm going to post the link for both of those in the description. Definitely check it out and check out his channel if you haven't already. Um, Next thing I want to talk about, which will ultimately lead into the draft talk, is the signing of edge rusher Kimoko Ture. Now, we signed him to a one-year deal, um, originally an edge rusher from the Colts. He was drafted in the 2018 draft, second round pick, I believe pick 52 overall. Now, here's someone who has really ideal size for that speed rusher off the edge. Now he ran a 46540 which at that position is pretty darn impressive. 65248. Now in my opinion I envision him essentially being Arden Key all over again, but the 2022 version of Arden Key. He's a guy who's had some success in the league. Um, His rookie year was actually pretty solid. Four sacks, 13 quarterback hits, and he actually did that in 42% of the defensive snaps. So solid numbers for a rookie coming into the NFL. 2019-2020, however, he was mostly injured, so really hard to gauge how his development was going to that point. But then last season had a really solid year as well. Five and a half sacks, eight quarterback hits, but that was actually only in 27% of the defensive snaps. Now, he's definitely a guy who wins off the edge, who wins with his speed, and I think that would really complement what we do here in San Francisco when you have guys like Armstead and Kinlaw and whatnot to really push the pocket up. Bosa can basically do everything, so it really allows those edge rushers, those speed edge rushers, to feast. We saw towards the end of the year, especially where guys like Ebu Cam and Arden Key were making really uh, you know, consistent plays because the quarterbacks were basically just forced out of the pocket, and that's where the speed guys make the plays. And I think Toure is going to come in, have a really solid year. Hopefully, he'll stay healthy and uh, really contribute to the team, and this could very much just be another Chris Kasori reclamation project. We saw what he did with Kerry Hyder a couple of years ago. Kerry Hyder came into the Niners off a year where he had one and a half sacks with us eight sacks. Arden Key came off a year with the Raiders where he didn't have any sacks. Comes here, have six and a half sacks and then gets a big payday in Jacksonville. So I think it's a wise move for both parties. Kimoko is still very young. He'll be 27 come the start of the season and ideally he'll be looking to be part of this rotation. And part of this rotation, this is a deep, deep rotation at edge. We got Boso, we got Hyder, we got Ebukam, we got Jordan Willis, we got uh, Omenahu, we have Kerry Hyder. So a lot of guys who played a lot of football have playoff experience and know the defense. So how this will kind of lead into the draft talk is that with the addition of Ture, it really means that we don't have to address an edge rusher early at all. Not that Kimoko Ture's you know, turning the needle one way or another in a significant way, but just the depth. You just saw the depth that our edge players is vast. We are really, really lucky to be this deep at such an important position. Um, So I really don't think we're forced to take any kind of edge rusher um, early by any means, unless, of course, if a top prospect happens to fall to us, great, all the better for us. Now, with that in mind, I think that the 49ers have actually covered pretty much, if not all of their needs, heading into the draft. Now, the two positions which you could very much argue are not fulfilled yet are, I think, at strong safety, that void left by Jaquaski Tart, who's still unsigned. Um, and then also, I would like another interior offensive lineman because, as I've said time and time again, Daniel Brunskill's value is going to be in that sixth offensive lineman role. So, we really don't have a lot of needs. So that allows us to kind of replicate the 2022, the, sorry, the 2020 draft where we went for Kinlaw and Ayuk because... Those positions were our only needs. So we can kind of do something like that again, uh, maybe to a lesser degree. Of course, we're not going to have two first round picks, but I think in this point, it could be another, could be a good option to go with quality versus quantity of picks. And uh, yeah, let's get into the talk about what that trade up might look like, who it might be with and what we might give up. 
Is trading up in the second round, pick 61 overall, a realistic option for the 49ers? Now, I believe that it is. We don't have many holes on this roster. We're a pretty deep roster, especially at the most important positions. Now, if we were to trade up, who would we be trading up for is a question to ask. With which team would we be trading up for? And then what would we be giving up to move up to those teams? So first off, which players could we be trading for? I think safety is a very obvious need. You know, um, Joukowsky Tart no longer with the team, still a free agent. So possibly we potentially bring him back. Um, but I think there are a lot of really solid safety options in that late first, early to mid second round spots who I think would actually be gone by pick 61. So the kind of four guys that really stand out to me, Daxon Hill from Michigan, we got Jaquan Brisker from Penn State, we have Lewisine from Georgia, and finally Jalen Petrie from Baylor. Of course, there's Kyle Hamilton from Notre Dame, but he'll be long gone before we could even think about trading up for him. Now, of those guys, I, mean, I like Daxton Hill the most, but he's also likely to be a first round pick. So I don't know how likely it would be, but you never know come draft. Drafted. The guy on this list that really sticks out to me is probably Jalen Petrie. I think we could probably move up to the middle of the second and still get him. I don't think he'll be one of the first safeties gone. I think it'll probably go Kyle Hamilton, Daxon Hill, then Jaquan Brisker. But hey, if Brisker's there or if Lewis Seen's there or Petrie's there, and if we really like those guys, I'd be more than happy to trade up for those because I believe any of those guys we could essentially plug and play at safety similar to what we did when we drafted Eric Reed in the first round out of LSU all those years ago just plug him in we have a very veteran talented defense around them you know maybe they get a bunch of snaps in preseason and whatnot and they could just you know plug and play let him go now should it not be for a safety who are some other options well I mentioned earlier in the video that maybe an interior offensive lineman who could potentially be a left guard or right guard depending on what we want to do with Aaron Banks now there aren't really too many options here because I think a lot of the top guys are going to be gone so Tyler Linderbaum who's strictly a center prospect in my opinion then you also have Kenyon Green I think both of those guys will be gone but someone who sticks out to me is really going to be Zion Johnson from Boston College they run a scheme that you know quite similar in terms of like a college aspect to what we do um, I think he's a perfect fit for the zone scheme if he's there, maybe merely mid-second round, I think the value at that point could be there if we can plug and play at left guard. Then we have an offensive line looking like Trent Williams. Then, you know, we have Zion Johnson, Alex Mack, Aaron Banks, Mike McGlinchey. And then look at that. We have Daniel Brunskill as a backup. We got McKivitz, Jalen Moore. So then we suddenly have a deep offensive line. Um, the other options, too, that we could potentially trade up for, I think if there's just like a phenomenal player that just falls in the draft. Um, names that I just kind of like threw off the top of my head. Christian Watson, of course, former teammate of Trey Lance at North Dakota State. Someone else who I really do like a lot is from the University of Oklahoma, which is Perry on Winfrey, who I think would be a perfect replacement for DJ Jones. I think Winfrey could absolutely be a Grady Jarrett type guy, um, just perfect for this scheme, attacking, penetrates, get after the quarterback, great against the run. Um, and although I do like our you know depth at interior defensive line with Armstead, you know with Kinlaw, we have Hurst and Givens and those guys. Um, you know I think it's still a position that we could. It's a sneaky position that we could look to upgrade. Um, now who could we be trading up with? Like which team would be uh, in the market to maybe move down. Well, the first one's going to be the Washington Commanders, in my opinion. They hold the 47th overall pick, so 14 picks ahead of us in the second round. Here's the thing. They actually don't pick. After the 47th pick, they don't pick again until 113th overall pick in the fourth round. So they could potentially look to move back a little bit and maybe pick up an extra third round. So you know, it could be a case if we give them pick 61 and maybe pick 93 or pick 61, 105, and maybe a sixth round pick. And that way they accumulate more middle round picks. They still have a second. They pick up a third. They can add depth to their, uh, to their roster. The other team, too, that I'm really looking at is the New York Jets. Now, the New York Jets have an abundance of picks. So the thought process there wouldn't be, well, let's accumulate more picks. Um, but the Jets are still very much in rebuild mode. Now, I think what could potentially get this deal done, because they have the 38th overall pick, um, would be pick 61 from the Niners. And I think if we threw in maybe a linebacker like Dre Greenlaw, who around the NFL is maybe not seen as like an elite player, but I think all Niner fans know just how good 
Dre Greenlaw is and of course how young he is. Um, so that could be someone that, and he's very familiar with Robert Sala over there with the Jets. So that could be potentially their you know, new captain of the defense or what have you. Um, and maybe we throw in a late round pick to the Jets too. So that way they still keep a second round pick. They get a the linebacker who they can just straight away maybe plug in right beside CJ Mosley and they get a later round pick too and that allows us to move up for a more elite prospect so you know that's kind of looking at some of the teams that we could trade up for and what a trade could possibly look like at the end of the day I do think if there is an elite prospect that falls whether it be at safety at interior offensive line or just someone who unexpectedly falls and we know this happens almost every year in the draft then this could be a very wise decision on the 49ers part again look we have Trey Lance on a rookie contract this is we have this window where we have an opportunity to win Super Bowls and I think it would be you know really wise to just go for it we saw the Rams go all in and it paid off now I'm not saying necessarily go with the Rams mentality of just trading away first round picks even though we did that for Trey Lance, but, you know, I think it's a case where we can actually go all in without, you know, mortgaging the future necessarily and also being smart about it. Or as uh, John Lynch, of course, would put it, being aggressively prudent. Um, but I think it would be a wise move and I think we have the ability to do it. So that's something that I would be in favor of for any of the options here. Um, of course, guys, let me know your thoughts on um, possibly trading up, who you would like us to trade up which teams you might think could be a possibility for what players and uh, if you think it would be the right move. Um, guys, I'm going to leave it right there for the video today. Thank you for checking it out. Thank you for all the new subscribers. We've had quite a few come in lately. Love all the comments on the mock draft videos. I'll be having another one coming out tomorrow. Of course, it'll be mock draft Monday. And um, yeah, let me know what you think. There'll be more videos coming out very soon. Uh, of course, you know, guys, I'm going to say two things. The butt counts. Catch y'all on the flip side.